Hey you, welcome back to my channel for our Plant Therapy Thursday session where we enter the plant kingdom and explore weird and beautiful plants from around the world. From relaxing rainforest plants to sculptural desert cacti and succulents. Good morning, welcome back for today's Plant Therapy Thursday session. I wanted to just do a casual plant vlog with you guys today. So I'm just at the house right now. I'm about to water my cactus and these guys are thirsty. So they are ready for a good drink of water. And then I also want to take you guys out to a few of my favorite cactus and succulent nurseries today. So I like using my watering wand and it's a Husqvarna. So let me go ahead and start watering the babies. I love these terracotta pots because the water can evaporate through the sides. You can already see it coming through there. I try to get up um, before the sun's up usually. I like to get up at 5 and be out here as quickly as possible to do my watering normally. I'm running late today, um, but especially when it's hot out during summertime like this, I try to get them watered earlier before the sun really heats up. I tend to collect a lot of mammalarias just because they are adorable. I mean, look at look at that one, that Haniana. Oh, that thing is adorable. I've got a variety of mimosas too, so some have the yellow spine and then some have the white spine. And they produce different color flowers. I've got a gymnast spin over here, mammalaria. This was given to me actually um, when Michael and I were out and about uh, going garage sailing. I saw someone had just got home and I was admiring the cactus in their yard as we were walking along the sidewalk and she was actually like, oh, hold on, you like that cactus? And she just like, it was like a big cluster and she just like plucked one out and gave it to me. It was so sweet and I absolutely love it. My malaria bombacina back here. That one I still have to get out of its nursery pot. Okay, let's, I'm using my water pressure. Let's pump this up a little. So you just turn that handle and pump the air into it. And it's got a little air release here if, um, like I won't leave air in there cause it might, you know, start to, I don't know, break the seal over time. So after I'm done using it, if there is any air left in here, then I'll just pull that release and let all the air out uh, after I'm done. So right now I'm just using regular filtered drinking water, but normally I try to use rain water whenever possible. Look at that beautiful honey on it. So at Box Cactus Nursery, next time we go there, I'll show you guys their uh, their mound of this. They have a, a whole clump of the Haniana. What's really interesting about these cactus is how different they can look, like their characteristics. You could have, you know, a dozen of the same plant and they can have very differing characteristics. Like some might be really furry like this and then you might have some that are a little more bald. Um, and some might clump out, some might stay more singular. They're just really, really neat and they're so super reactive to the care that you give them, the environment that they're in. And they're very reactive to how much sun they get too. So the more sun that these mammalarias get, the more wool they're gonna get. I've got another hairy one here, but this one is not a mammalaria. That one is Old Man of the Andes. I've got a mammalaria Glosaliana here, but look how cute that one is. That one just caught my attention. I got this one at Arid Lands Greenhouses. It's just one of the cutest cactus. Oh my gosh, I love it. Mammillaria candida. Mammillaria glassii. And again, when I'm watering, I'm going to try to keep the water off of their wool. Now, this one doesn't have as much wool on it, but it's still just like a little puffball. It's called the Chihuahuan Snowball, otherwise known as the Thela Cactus Magdalii. Absolutely love that one too. Really cute. We've got a Neoporteria nidus. Now some of these end up going by different names. You know, they get reclassified into sometimes a new genus or a different genus. And I'll try to put the names up on the screen as we're going. I won't go through the whole collection because uh, that will take a while. But if you guys want to see a, a collection of my cactus, I can do that sometime. And this one back here is a large yellow-spined uh, plumosa, mammalaria plumosa. So this poor baby, when I got it at the state sale, it didn't even look like it was still alive. Like, I wasn't even sure if it was still living. It was so shrunken and shriveled and super tiny. And it didn't look anything like this. But I thought, you know what? It was only $8. Let me give it a shot. Uh, if it doesn't pull through, at least I'll have the, the pot out of the deal. But it pulled through and it started pumping back up and now you can see all the individual, you know, the, the mound and all the individual little cactus babies in there. 
and this one too. So those were both in the same pot and I had to split it up because it had a big like, a big like, uh, I don't know, chunk taken out of it, like an animal had got it or something. I don't know what had happened, but I just decided to split it into two and have two separate pots growing of it. I got a Rubutia pygmea. Rubutias are all another one of my favorite cactus. They're a dwarf cactus. They're so cute, like this one. Oh my gosh, look at look at this nervous census here. So little tiny sweet baby clump of the Rubutia nervous census. These have absolutely gorgeous pink flowers. And then we've got the Mammalaria Selmaniana. This one is another pro prolific bloomer. This one is the Epithelantha Micromeris. So darn cute. Oh my gosh, I got this one out here in these greenhouses too. This is also known as the Button Cactus or Ping Pong Ball Cactus. Now, Mammalarias are one of my favorites, but I do have some other cactus in here. This is Echinocereus laui. This one is another gorgeous one too. Over here we have the Mammalaria bocasana. This one puts out really beautiful pink flowers. Now, Mammalarias usually, for the most part, put out smaller flowers, but they do the halo, which is just gorgeous. Mammalarias are really the fur babies of the cactus world. I mean. I mean, look at that. Look at that wool. <laughs> Is that not adorable? <laughs> oh my gosh, I just, I love them so much. See? Fur baby. There's another one. Fur baby. I have a couple of baby golden barrels. Where's the other one here? Oh, you know what? It must be, must be over on my other table. It's a little bit younger, so I've been keeping it out of the sun. I just recently repotted it. There's a Gymnocolisium brookii. This one puts out really pretty light pink flowers. This is a Mammalaria bullii. This one has gorgeous flowers. Oh my gosh, they're like white with pink centers on the petals. Uh, actually, you know what? I think I have a clip of them. I'll insert that here so you can see what they look like. But they are just stunning. And so I ended up having to get another one of these blue eggs because I want to uh, try to pollinate it. I tried to pollinate this one, but I don't know if it was self-pollinating and it was the only one I had. And so I gave it a shot a couple of weeks ago. You can see the old flowers there. I just leave, leave those on. And I hope that fruit forms, but I don't see any sign of anything yet, so it might not have taken. And it might require another plant to be able to do that. I don't know. I'll have to update you guys on that. But it does have new flower buds forming in there. I see them poking through. And as the buds start to get a little more developed, I'm going to take it out of the sun because I noticed that our hot sun here, it will dry up the buds before they even get a chance to bloom. So uh, as soon as those get a little more sun, uh, so I have it in filtered sunlight right now, but still it can get so hot that it just, it just dries those buds right out. So I'll be moving that one pretty soon here and keeping it in the shade. So it'll be in bright shade outside here. And then back here is an Echinocereus Reckenbachii. This one has really pretty white spines. It uh, also produces pink flowers. Now this one we just got pretty recently, and I don't know its name yet, so I gotta look it up. I got it at Lowe's or Home Depot. I think it was at Lowe's. And I gotta find out which one it is and then make a tag for it. So I like to water my cactus really well until the water starts seeping through the bottom of the pot. And then I just let them dry out really well in between waterings. Here's another Mammalaria plumosa. And so I've got quite a collection of the fuzzy white cactus. So basically all fur babies is kind of my collection of cactus. But I just really, really enjoy these a lot. I'll collect some other kinds of cactus too. Oh, we didn't get this class yet yet. All right, so I'm just on the patio right now, just organizing, and I realized my succulents are getting very upset right now because they're getting too much sun. So I'm making a space back here so I can push them closer to the house and get them in more shade because they're just getting cooked. Um, I had to move a bunch down here, so I'm shifting everything around right now. So I have these actually under the covering 
here, but the sun is coming through too much on them. So I'm just clearing out a space right now. Okay, I'm still sweeping and cleaning and organizing out here. It's starting to warm up quite a bit. It's gonna be 107 today. And I know this table is pretty shabby looking, but that's just gonna be temporary. It was just kind of an emergency to get those poor babies um, completely out of the sun. And over here, I'm also doing some sweeping and cleaning on this side. So I'm just moving some pots. I'm gonna move uh, my terracotta pots inside. I have most of my terracotta pots stored inside just so I can keep them nice and clean. And I do repotting inside too. So I will move those in and out of the way out here. I've got more succulents in the shade on this side. Um, and I'm going to add another shelf right here. I've got a lithops down here. Let's see how that one is doing. Ooh, wow, that one is, yes, that one is all plumped up. I watered that uh, about mm, maybe five days ago, and it was really shriveled down, and now it's like super full. So when they show signs of a little bit of shriveling, I will give them a little bit of water during their growing season. So I'll water until they flower in fall, and then I don't give them any water again until springtime when they have completed uh, reabsorbing the water from their old plant body. So I only water when it starts to shrivel. And right now it has got a very tight body on it. It is like super full of water. So very greedy lithops. You water these things and they suck it all up. Um, so, all right, that one still looks good. I've got a few other little baby succulents. Not too much happening over here. Got a baby um, a golden barrel. Almost forgot the, what that was for a second. And then, oh, I do have a euphorbia up there. That one's looking good. Uh, Graptivaria Debbie. This is an old one. Uh, it does have an older trunk on it and you can, you know, uh, behead these and shorten the trunk and keep them all tight and compact, you know, something that looks more like that. But I actually love when they grow that longer trunk and it starts to get woody as they age and mature and it turns into like a little a little bonsai palm tree or something, you know, like a little succulent palm tree bonsai. I think that one is doing pretty good. It's got some new babies around it. Oh, it's got some seed pods on there too. I gotta collect those. Hey guys, we just got to Airlands Greenhouses. We decided to come down here and check out the Haworthias and Haworthias are gonna be coming into their season. Right now, ours are in dormancy and they're gonna be coming out pretty soon. So they are uh, winter growers. And so during the fall time, when the seasons change, they start waking up. All along here, all Haworthias and they got seedlings up here. Oh these. Look at these. These lithops. Optica rubra. Oops, sorry. Got the shadow in there. They look like candy or something. They look like, I don't know, like gummy lithops. <laughs> Did you see these over here, Michael? Uh, I mean, I think you saw them last time, but take a look how they've changed color in the sun since the last time we saw these seedlings. Oh, wow. Yeah, Living gummy, rocks. gummy lithops. That looks exactly like a rock right there. Uh, yeah, look at how neat. Oh, they are cute. Oh, they have some variegated ones that are really neat, too. That's a variegated there. There's a Haworthia retusa. They produce star-shaped rosettes. Really beautiful, and they have the windows on the top. Uh, let's come over here, though. Lithops are just some of the craziest little plants. But there's something really cute and so unique about them, too. You know, the way they put out their new bodies. Let's see, there's some giant ones back here. Whoa, look at that one, it's huge! I like the Optica Rubro one though. Up from the little seedlings, but those aren't going to be ready for another year. They're all splitting, they're all putting out their new bodies right now. They're one of the most unique succulents because they have a specific growth cycle and you have to water them according to what growth cycle they're in. So like when they're splitting like this, let's see, let's find one. So a lot of these are putting their energy into creating their new bodies and you can see the older bodies or the older leaves kind of shriveling down around there. So they are taking all the water and any nutrients and whatnot from their old bodies and putting it into the new one. So right now, for example, you would not water during this time and you wait until it's used up all of its old leaves and old body. See those have split and they got their old leaves shriveling up. 
Hey guys, we just got to Desert Survivors. It's another nursery here in Tucson. This is one of my favorite little barrel cactus. They've got these big yellow flowers. But it's a smaller one. They only get like a foot to two feet. They can get plumper. There's no spines on them. And they, um, they taste like kiwi, but like with a real depth of flavor that's pretty surprising and really good. Some of these cactus fruits are, are really, um, I think, under underutilized. This hedgehog, they sort of look like dragon fruit when you cut them in half. Oh yeah. They're, they're the red outer um, kind of skin with a white inside and like, you know, many, many um, black seeds that you just chew up and um, really, really good. This is the one where they'll have like viewing parties out at Tahona Chul and the Desert Museum. Okay. Um, you know, because the flowers only last one night. But these are the ones that have a big tuber, right? Or sometimes, yep. yeah. Yeah. So these will have it. Yeah, these do have it. You can even fish around and kind of see that it's starting oh, to look at that. there. Yeah. Um, one of my friends, when he moved, he, he's just like, I'm taking mine with me. And he took them up and they were like 50 pounds. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Like How long did it take to get that big? I'm not sure. I think he had his in there for probably 10 years or more. Oh, yeah. But, and they usually will take, you know, at least like six to seven years before they even flower. These are really popular, these rainbow pink cushions. Uh, oh, look at these blooming, Christine. That's one of those, yeah, those astrophones. You haven't been in in a while? Yeah, it's been probably, what, like... Over a years? year, I think, yeah. For sure over a year. But uh, we're, we're, yeah, peak season through fall. Okay. And then just check our website, or if you're on Facebook, we'll do updates. I love the contrast. That's what I love about cactus and bloom so much, is the contrast of their bodies and their spines versus the, you know, the pretty delicate flowers. They're just such a stunning contrast. Uh, this is acne sand and gravel here in Tucson and this is where I come to buy my pumice and then also decomposed granite. They've also got sand, all-purpose sand, where's the cactus soil? But they've got all kinds of different, oh they've got a couple different sizes of pumice there too. But they've got all kinds of lava, um, clays, topsoil, sands here. All right, so let me grab a couple bags, and they have bags over here. So you can bring your own five gallon bucket if you want, or uh, I'm just gonna grab like their little light bags so you can just fill it up for a few bucks. Uh, I think pumice is actually like five bucks. See this black lava sand? This is what the bonsai people here in town like to use. Okay, so here it is. Decomposed granite that we're gonna be using. Here's the decomposed granite. Day. I think it's gonna be like 105 today, something like that. But yeah, you just drive down here and you gotta identify which pile it is so you know what you're, you know, they'll tell you kind of where it's located. Now, the pumice they have a couple different sizes in. There's a smaller size up here. Let's see if they still have some. Yeah, they've got a little back here. So I'll just come back here and show you guys. This is much smaller, it's much finer. I like the size of the pieces that are intact, like before they've broken down into sand, but you can see here that there's a lot of sandy fines in there, and so you have to sift it to be able to get those nicer pieces out, but I do like the size of the, the bigger pieces that are in here. And then here's the bigger option here. So that's like the, I don't know what they call that, the quarter inch or something, and then this is three eighths. This is much nicer, the quality of it. Like, look at the quality of this. Oh yeah, this is definitely, this doesn't have as much Yeah, that's, this is a, a much nicer quality without all the sandy fines. See hardly any fines to it. I mean, you'll have a little bit of dust, but it's nothing like all the sand and the, and the smaller fine. But this is the size that all the soil companies use. Out. Okay. <laughs> Everything's different prices, but pumice is usually around five dollars a bag. 
we just stopped at this garage sale and I forgot to film. I don't know. Well, it's kind of awkward, you know, you can't really film at garage sales. I don't know. But I did find a rattan, um, well, it's an ottoman, but I'm probably going to end up using it as a paint stand. If I do decide to use it as an ottoman ever, I can always make my own cushion. But, um, probably yeah. gonna use it as a plant stand. Yeah, that's gonna mm -hmm. be a plant stand. But it's hard to see it back here, so I'll show you, you when we get home. Four dollars. Yeah. Yep, good deal for a tan plant stand. Like, oh, it's so nice today. No haggle look at that price. Blue sky. They're moving to San Antonio. Away. Okay, I'm at B and B Cactus Nursery. Looking at some Haworthias. Oh, look at those. Ooh, Haworthia retusa. Look at all the babies on that. Holy moly, look at that. Oh, you could you could really propagate a lot of plants off of that one. Nice. Yeah, for six bucks you could really propagate a ton of plants off there. Look at all those little babies. Sweet. Oh, they got a whole table of lithops. Look at this. All the way around here. They got a bunch of new ones in. Okay, let's check them out. Look at that one. So these are displays that aren't for sale, but it's always fun to look at them. Look at all those sweet babies. More. Ooh, they got those green ones. Let's see. Those have really cool pots here too. I uh, see this one is extra tall but narrow, so lithops have a uh, taproot, so that allows for the taproot, but it keeps a limited amount of soil in the pot because they're rock prone. Those are really cool little lithop pots. I'm gonna look for any that catch my eye. Lithop paradise. I'm gonna have to look through all of these, you guys, and see if any catch my eye, so. Oh my gosh, there's a lot to look through. Let me let me see here. Let me start at one end. I'll work my way over. All right, I picked out some lithops. I'll show you guys those later. But I want to show you this one. This is a really rare plant, and it's very hard to find. It's Euphorbia obesa. These, we've only got two left. I really want one, but these tend to be a little pricier. Like that is $28. They're super cool. This one's got some ants running around on it. I guess they like the sap at the very top because they're going on both of them. These are a really unique type of euphorbia. Very hard to get a hold of. There's a cactus greenhouse. I'm gonna check this out. I love all the display cactus up front here. Look at that one is gorgeous. Bosaliana. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, we'll just set the lip ups there while we look around. Oh, we got Mammillary Grammii. These produce beautiful pink flowers. These are also known as the Arizona Fishhook Cactus. I like this one. Maybe, okay. Let's keep that one in mind. Look at this. Mammillary Spinosissimus. It's the red-headed Irishman, and it actually has stripes that are formed on it. Okay, so I'm in the middle of doing a soil experiment right now. So what I do is I like to test out different soil uh, substrates, different potting medias. So I mixed up two custom cactus potting soils. And so I took one and made it with a base of cocoa chips. So cocoa core, but not the peat, just the chips. So pot one has a cocoa base and pot two has a soil base. And this soil that I used in this one, we got at uh, Desert Survivors. So it's their actual soil base that they use for all of their plants, including cactus. And they, they customize it there too. So it's just the base and then I customized it here. So cocoa base, soil base and all the other ingredients in both of these are exactly the same. So usually I use quite a bit of pumice. I use two sizes of pumice in here. So the quarter inch and then I sieve out the, uh, what I would call pumice sand. And so it's like maybe, maybe two millimeter, maybe three millimeter, but right around there, it's pretty small, but it's like coarse sand, but it's pumice. So I really like it a lot for using in some of my pots um, for plants that have smaller, finer roots, like very, very delicate fibrous roots, which some of the mammalarias have. So I have that in here along with a quarter inch pumice. And then I've got red volcanic lava, uh, turfus, which is the calcium clay, 
and let's see oh i used a little bit of activated charcoal in there so how i do these experiments is i take the exact pots that i would be using for my cactus so these are just small size terracotta pots that i got at walmart for like 88 cents so really cheap and i fill them with my my cactus soil mixes so i weigh the pots dry and then i water the pots so they're really soaked and so i want them completely saturated with water and then i weigh them again wet and i make it out of that so that way i know the starting point and then when the pot is fully soaked and then i can know how many uh, grams of water is being held by each soil mixture and then i set the pots outside with the rest of my cactus so they can be in the same lighting same airflow and that way i can see exactly how much water is going to be evaporating under the same exact conditions that my cactus are actually in and so I weighed them, so I waited 24 hours, I weighed them again, so that way I can see how much water has evaporated in 24 hours. So I already did that yesterday. So we're just finishing up this experiment right now. And then I put them back outside and let them sit overnight, and then I just weighed them a little while ago. And so our cocoa base pot number one was still retaining 14 grams of water. And then pot number two with the soil base is still retaining 32 grams of water. So whenever I do one of these experiments at the end, I dump the soil out and I want to feel it like I want to physically feel it because it's something different when you're able to touch it besides just, you know, seeing what the scale says, like actually feeling what the soil is still holding and how, you know, how much moisture is there, what the texture feels like and everything. It, is, it gives you a better idea about what the roots are actually touching, you know? So anyway, I'm gonna bring you guys in closer and we'll dump these out because that's that's actually my favorite part because I really wanna get in there. I'm very hands-on. So this is pot number one, pot number two, but since you guys are facing that way, I'm gonna make this easier for you and just move these around. So it seems like it's more in order for you. So pot number one with our cocoa base and then pot number two with our soil base, all right? so. I also like to check um, how much the soil has compacted, like if there's any still lodged in the bottom of the pot. Wow, look at that. It came out so easy. No compaction whatsoever in there. Okay, I've done, I've done other experiments just like this and the soil, like certain soils will like get stuck in the second half of the pot. Um, but that just like, that just like fell right out, no problem. Okay, I can still feel a little bit of moisture like it's not bone dry you can definitely still feel that 14 grams of moisture in there and you can feel it actually the pumice you wouldn't think that that like the pumice you would think feels very dry but you can feel that little bit of dampness because it's very porous and it does hold moisture which is awesome so pumice is an amazing substrate because it can hold water but it still allows airflow so it's you it's like you get the best of both worlds it's just incredible and so i like to um like whatever size pumice i'm getting whether I go to Acme Sand and Gravel, which is where I buy it from. Uh, if I buy, and they have two sizes. They have the, I think what they call the quarter inch, and it has fines in it, which is like the really sandy, dusty stuff that most people hate. Um, so if I buy that, I will sift that out. So I sift out my dust from that so I can get the good part of it, which is like about quarter inch uh, size pieces of pumice. And then the sand, which is like, you know, two to three millimeters. I like that sand though a lot. So, um, but the dust, don't like the dust. You gotta get that out of there because otherwise your soil will be uh, compacted. We got the slightest bit of moisture in the cocoa chips, but not much at all. Like it does hold a little bit, but it's like a sponge. Let's see if this peaceful. Is there a little bit of water juicing out there? I can feel it, but I don't know if you're able to see it on there. But yeah, these are amazing little sponges for holding water, but still being super airy and light. And they're like little cushions in your soil. Um, so it's a totally different type of cocoa fiber product compared to what peat is. Peat really holds on to water. It like sucks it up and it holds on to it for a long time, the cocoa peat. But the cocoa chips are very spongy, very airy, very porous. Okay, so there you can see some of the pumice sand that I use. I call it pumice sand, but um, it's just small pieces. You know, we're talking millimeters instead of, you know, quarter inch size, like some of these bigger pieces up here. But overall, it's just very small. And I actually have used that with the lithops too, and they seem to really do well with that. Oh, and Haworthia is also. But that's not something that you can just go and buy. You gotta like sift it out of the pumice um, at least I don't, I've never seen pumice sand available, you know, or pumice that small sold just like that. It's just like a byproduct basically of sifting your own pumice. 
but really happy with how that mix turned out. Yeah, I like that a lot. Now, now for some people, it might be too dry of a mix. It just depends on what plants you're growing and you know exactly how chunky you want the mix or how fine you want it. Let's set this aside and let's just see what happens when we go to dump this out. Let's see if we get any compaction. Uh-oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> there we go. Well, let's see. Let's see if we if we pick up this chunk, let's see how compacted it's gonna be. No, not bad. Oh, there we go. Oh, I like it. Okay, that was nice and crumbly. Not bad at all. Now, if that had like stayed together in a hard ball, we don't like that. So this, you can definitely feel that moisture in here. It's not wet. You can just feel the dampness. It's a little light dampness, but you definitely have, you can feel that extra moisture in here compared to this one. This one is definitely much lighter and fluffy. Even the feeling of the pots, this is really super lightweight and this definitely is super dense and much heavier. You can just feel the difference. Um, but some plants prefer more of a soil mix because sometimes you need those finer pieces, right? The finer particles for certain roots, whereas not all plants will like it super chunky, right? Like that might dry out too fast for certain plants. Like that was drying out at a really high rate. And this one holds on to a little more moisture, which can be good or bad depending on the plant that you're gonna be potting up in it. So if I wanted to lighten this mix up even more and have it evaporate water even faster, which is why I love mixing up my own soil, because you're able to control how fast the water evaporates, right? Which is amazing. Like that gives you full control over your, over your plants. So if you have any uh, rot prone plants, you know, maybe you have a really chunky Haworthia or you've got Lithops or, you know, an Arizona rainbow cactus that's super uh, sensitive to being overwatered and it's very rot prone. Um, you're able to completely control how much moisture they're going to have access to by mixing up your own soil. Um, so this one, I do like a lot. So say I was going to use this for an especially rot prone variety like our Arizona rainbow cactus, then I would add more grit to it. So I would choose more pumice and more pumice sand. And that would make this super fast drain. I mean, it already was really fast draining, but it would make it even less uh, rich. So it would have less organic ingredients and more inorganic, which is more minerals. So more of the pumice, lava, turfus, calcium clay. If you have ac Akadama, uh, I don't have Akadama, but I know you can order it online. Although I think in some areas it's kind of expensive to try to get a hold of. So I just use pumice um, since I've got access to that. But yeah, if you just use what you have access to in your area, there's always options. So you don't have to use exactly what you see someone else use. We're pretty much all just experimenting and that's what you know, that's part of growing. It's part of what keeps it fun and interesting. And uh, you always learn new things by experimenting with new soil substrates. Okay, let's do the plant haul and I'll show you guys what we got when we were out and about at the cactus nurseries. All right, so here's what Michael and I got when we were out at the nurseries. And we also stopped at Lowe's, but I wasn't able to film in there because it was too loud. Um, so yeah, they had fans going on and I wanted to film more at B&B too, but it was pretty loud there because they had the fans going in the cactus greenhouse. So I knew it was going to be hard for you guys to hear. So sorry about that. I'll try to film again there very soon though. So let me show you what we got at B&B cactus first. I did get some lithops because that was one of my main missions of going there and I picked out some kind of peachy colored ones. Now there's a wide variety of lithops and I don't know all of their names. I just go and I look and see which ones look the cutest and that's what I pick out. So I think a couple of these are the Cars Montana. So these two Cars Montana haven't split yet. This one has those. So this one already has its new its new little body coming through there. So already flowered, it's already split. This one still waiting to see the little body on that one. but. They're in different stages, so I'm not gonna pop them together. But these two, if they turn out to be in a similar growing cycle, then I will go ahead and pop those together because I love the look of little lithop gardens where there's multiples in the same pot. 
um, and I just try to keep them in their same growing or a similar growing cycle anyway so watering will be easier. Best time to repot lithops is in the fall when they're just starting to put out all their new roots and they're in their growing season so I'm going to wait until about October before I repot these guys so they're just going to be hanging out in their pot. They look like they're they're pretty good, they're healthy, so I'm not going to disturb their roots or anything right now. Now if I had one that was kind of sickly looking, then I would take it out of the soil right away and see what was going on with the roots. But for these, I'm just going to leave them alone for now until the fall time. And we did just get these two, and I already repotted them into one of the soil mixes that I just made. So this is the Cephalocerus senilis. It's the old man of Mexico. Oops, sorry, camera is not focusing. It's looking at a different cactus. There we go. So this one has amazing wool on it. It's almost, it feels like, it's not super soft like a mammalaria. It's more like a Brillo pad. It, it is so weird to touch. Oh, you know what? Michael's just coming in. So if you hear some noises in the background, that's going to be him. Okay, anyway, that one, Old Man of Mexico. And there's, I have an Old Man of the Andes, and there's an Old Man of Peru, too. I don't have that one yet, but I'd love to collect all the, all the really wooly ones like that. Here's a Pygmyocerius Fiblii. I'll put the names on the screen in case I mispronounce the, the last name there, but it looks like Fiblii. Not for sure, though, on that one. This is a completely new cactus to me, so I'll have to take some time and get to know it, but I do know that it produces a gorgeous long stem white flower, and I can't wait for this one to bloom, so it'll produce white flowers in springtime. So I look forward to seeing that one. Also at B&B, I got an Arizona rainbow cactus, which is Echinocerius rigidissimus, and they produce beautiful pink flowers. And also their spines, they get really stripy, depending on how much sunlight they're getting. And so the newer spines usually are more of the bolder pink, kind of a brighter pink, and then as they grow out, they can change. So it produces really amazing stripes. When you see these in the wild, like Michael and I went out, I went on a mission to go find these in the wild in the Santa Rita Mountains here, and they are so cool. We found some that were super stripy, and it was almost like, I don't know, like a candy cane kind of, kind of thing. It was like, they're just so fun. So the Arizona Rainbow Cactus is a really variable cactus, like the look of it, the characteristics. They are each very unique in how they produce um, their colors and their spines. And so I do like to collect these when I see them. If I see a good looking one, you know, even though I might have two at home already, I will get another one. We've got another Mammillaria bullii, and this one has buds, flower buds forming on it. And so that one is another one I'm gonna keep out of the sun for now. Um, well, I'll let it get a little bit of morning filtered sunlight, but I'm not gonna let it get into any hot sun. Uh, because those buds will end up drying up uh, in our our hot sun here. It really cooks the buds, so I gotta be careful of that. So whenever I see them start to go into bud like that, I will try to give them extra sun protection. And then, oh, uh, so I didn't tell you the flowers on this one. So I got one of these because I already had one and I wanted to be able to cross pollinate um, or I wanted to be able to pollinate them because I don't know if they're self-fertile. So I tried to pollinate my other one when it went into bloom, but I don't think it took. So I thought, you know, let me get another one, a friend for it, and then I can try pollinating back and forth and see if that will work having two plants. But it produces gorgeous pink flowers with white edges. Oh, they're so, so pretty. And they're, they're larger than normal uh, mammillaria flowers. And then we have a Mammillaria grammii. This one produces really pretty pink flowers too. And this one also is going into buds. So it's got little buds hiding down in there. It's gonna be really hard to see, but they're down there hiding underneath the spines there. And there's slightly a lighter shade of green compared to its body. So hopefully I can pollinate that one and we'll see if that takes. So the Mammillaria grammii is another cactus that produces really pretty flowers. Now here's another gorgeous mammillaria, and it's producing wool right now, and under that little halo of wool is where the, the flower buds start to form. So it is hopefully going to go into bud sometime here. Um, and the wool it uses to kind of protect and conceal those buds until they're actually ready and formed. Now this is a gorgeous uh, cactus because when it finally produces its flowers, they're a light pink, and they just look really beautiful with the white wool. Um, they're a really light pink. Anyway, so when that goes into bloom, I'll be really excited to show you guys. Uh, so this used to be known as the Ritteriana, but I think they reclassified it. I think its scientific name is Mammillaria formosa variety or subspecies 
Chionocephala, something like that. But I'll put the name up here on the screen so you guys know what I'm talking about just in case I mispronounce anything. Um, this one is a Mammillaria fumanii, and it's a variety globosa, and it forms a small, it's a small clumping cactus. So this one also produces beautiful pink flowers, and it's going into bud right now, so it has buds in there. So that's another one I'm going to be protecting from the sunlight, because I want to make sure those buds are able to fully develop and not get scorched. Let's take this one out of the box and move that. All right, so that was our cactus and lithops haul from B&B Cactus here in Tucson. And then we also went to a couple of Lowe's because they had gotten some new cactus in too. So, oh, wait, shoot, I forgot about this little one here. This is uh, Mammillaria glassii. Now, I already have a couple of these, but I, I'm not opposed to having extras because, you know, they do have different characteristics. Their cactus are all different. They're very variable as far as their, their looks and their characteristics go. Um, so this one was forming so many pups. I saw that and I was just like, oh my gosh, that thing is adorable. I have to take that home. And it's always nice to have doubles also of your plants because then you can pollinate them. So this Mammillaria glassii we got at Green Things. And then from Lowe's, here's Mammillaria zelmaniana. Now this one, I again already have one, but I wanted to be able to pollinate. And so I needed another plant to be able to do that. And this one actually has different flowers than the one that I have. And I don't, I don't think it's older than the plant that I have. I think they just, it's just a different characteristic where the, the flowers here look like they're doubles compared to the one I have. So I don't know, I may try to cross pollinate those, but they are super pretty and it's got a bunch more buds that are gonna be opening up on it too. So we got a couple of these Echinobibia hybrids. These are rainbow bursts. This one has a ton of pups on it too. So I'm gonna be repotting that and also removing some of the pups. So those are going to make fun new little baby cactus. I can't wait to start growing those little pups. And then this one has much younger ones, so I'm not going to be taking those off yet. I'll wait until those get a little bit older. And I saw this Echinopsis rose quartz. I've never grown one of these before, so I thought, you know what, let's, let's give it a shot. And I love the name of it, rose quartz, so I was like, okay, we are definitely going to try growing that one. I'm sure the flowers are probably beautiful on it since it has the name Rose Quartz. And then we have an Echinopsis septinudatum, also known as Dominoes or Fuzzy Navel. These are really fun plants. They're almost spineless and they do have some little creamy spines kind of hidden below the little, uh, little uh, polka dots of wool. But I just think these are absolutely adorable and they put out really beautiful long stem white flowers and the flowers are huge compared to the body of the plant. I just love the little tufts of wool and how they're in the polka dot formation on there. Really cute plants. Hang on here, I almost forgot our Haworthias from Aridlands Greenhouses. So we ended up getting this Haworthia Magnifica. This one is gorgeous, it has beautiful windows. The windows, when you have this in the lighting the windows are just absolutely stunning on it. And then this one is the Haworthia cuspidata. And that one is currently in dormancy, so it's looking, you know, a bit deflated right now. So once it comes out of dormancy, it's going to plump back up though. So that one is going to be adorable. It also has a little baby on the side there. So those are the two Haworthias that we got at Aridlands Greenhouses. I'm going to let you guys go for this video. I'm going to be doing some potting up right now. And if you guys want to see uh, potting up cactus or soil mixes or anything, just let me know in the comments below and I'm happy to do those videos for you. So I'm going to get potting up and I will see you guys in the next video. Love you and have an awesome week. Bye guys.